The Elephant Island Chronicles presents The Emperor's New Reality, a sequel to Hans Christian Andersen's timeless tale, The Emperor's New Clothes, by Conrad Hannon, narration by Amazon Polly. Forward. This story is a sequel to Hans Christian Andersen's timeless tale, The Emperor's New Clothes. While it continues Anderson's narrative, it ventures into new territory, exploring themes of power, deception, and the fragility of leadership in a complex world. Any resemblance to real persons, living or dead, or actual events is purely coincidental, cough cough. This work is a product of imagination, and any similarities are unintentional. Enjoy the story, and may it prompt thoughtful contemplation on the intricate dance of power and perception. Conrad, the Emperor's New Reality In the days following the grand procession, an uneasy silence fell over the palace. The Emperor had retreated to his chambers, refusing to emerge or speak with anyone. His most trusted advisers gathered in secret, their faces drawn with worry and exhaustion. What are we to do now? the Chancellor asked, his voice barely above a whisper. The people know. They've seen the truth with their own eyes. The Minister of Public Affairs shook his head. Perhaps we can convince them it was all part of an elaborate test, a way to identify the truly loyal subjects, and make fools of ourselves in the process, scoffed the Treasurer. No, we must find a way to maintain order without acknowledging the obvious. The room fell silent as each adviser contemplated the gravity of their situation. They had spent years carefully constructing an image of strength and infallibility around their emperor. Now, with a child's innocent words, that illusion had shattered. We could limit his public appearances, suggested the master of ceremonies, keep him secluded, issue proclamations in his name. The people need never know the extent of... Of what? The chancellor interrupted sharply. Speak plainly for once. We're all thinking it. The master of ceremonies swallowed hard. The extent of his limitations. A murmur of uncomfortable agreement rippled through the room. They had all noticed the emperor's decline, the forgotten names, the confused ramblings, the inability to make coherent decisions, but to acknowledge it openly felt like treason. And what of foreign affairs? The foreign minister interjected. Our enemies will surely seek to exploit this weakness. We cannot hide him away entirely. The chief of intelligence leaned forward, his eyes glinting. Then we must create a new illusion. One so grand, so all-encompassing, that it makes the people forget what they saw. We'll flood them with spectacle, grand proclamations, and bold initiatives. But who will truly rule? asked the chancellor. A heavy silence fell over the room. Each adviser saw the hunger in the other's eyes, the barely concealed ambition. We will, of course, the chief of intelligence said smoothly, for the good of the empire, we'll guide his hand, whisper in his ear, the emperor need only play his part. The master of ceremonies shifted uneasily. And when he can no longer even do that? When he can no longer maintain even the pretense of coherence? Then we pray we've woven our own invisible cloth so well that no one dares to point out the obvious, the chancellor replied grimly. For if our emperor falls, we all fall with him. As dawn broke over the city, the advisers dispersed, each lost in thought. They had maintained the facade for so long, could they truly sustain it for years to come? And at what cost to the empire they had sworn to serve? Outside the palace walls, life in the city slowly returned to normal. But a current of unease ran beneath the surface, a shared secret that no one dared speak aloud. They had all seen the emperor's true state and knew that the greatest deception was yet to come. Weeks passed, and the emperor remained hidden from public view. His proclamations, now penned by the chief of intelligence and signed with a trembling hand, grew increasingly grandiose. The palace became a theater, with advisers rehearsing their roles, choreographing every move and word to maintain the illusion of a capable ruler. Rumors began to swirl among the populace. Some believed the emperor was gravely ill. Others whispered of a coup. The advisers countered these tales with stories of the emperor's deep contemplation of his grand vision for the empire's future. 
They orchestrated events to distract and dazzle, parades, festivals, and elaborate ceremonies showcasing the realm's might and unity. But the cracks in the facade widened. Foreign dignitaries, invited to grand banquets, noted the emperor's absence and exchanged knowing glances. The common folk, despite the spectacles, began to question the authenticity of the proclamations. Discontent simmered beneath the surface. In the privacy of the palace, the emperor's condition worsened. His moments of lucidity grew fewer, his rants more incoherent. The advisers' once steady hands began to shake with the weight of their deceit. They met more frequently, their discussions turning desperate. We can't keep this up. The master of ceremonies admitted one evening, his voice trembling. The strain is too great. The people will see through the charade. We have no choice, the chancellor replied, his tone resolute. To admit the truth now would be to invite chaos. We must continue for the sake of the empire. But at what cost? the treasurer asked, his eyes hollow. We've already sacrificed our integrity, our sanity. How much more can we give? The chief of intelligence stood, his expression cold and calculating. We must find a way to solidify our power, to make the people accept our rule without question. We must eliminate any threat to our authority. And how do you propose we do that? The foreign minister asked, skepticism lacing his words. By creating an enemy, the chief replied, a sinister smile creeping across his face. An external threat that unites the people in fear and obedience. We control the narrative, and in doing so, we control the empire. The room fell silent as the advisers considered the proposal. It was a dark path that would lead them further from the ideals they once claimed to uphold. But they were already too deep in their deception to turn back now. The chancellor nodded slowly. Very well, we proceed as planned. But remember this, if we fail, if the truth is revealed, it will not just be the emperor who falls, we will all be condemned as traitors. The advisers left the chamber, their minds heavy with the burden of their choices. They had chosen their path and now had to walk it, no matter where it led. Months turned into years, and the illusion held, but just barely. The fabricated enemy, a distant kingdom painted as a dire threat, served its purpose. The people rallied behind the emperor their fear and patriotism blinding them to the truth. The advisers tightened their grip on power, their machinations growing ever more complex and ruthless. But the cost was steep. The empire, once a beacon of prosperity, began to crumble under the weight of its own deceit. Resources were diverted to the perpetual war effort, leaving the common folk to suffer. Discontent grew, and whispers of rebellion filled the air. Within the palace, the emperor's condition deteriorated beyond concealment. He became a ghost, a figurehead propped up for rare appearances, his vacant eyes starkly contrasting the vibrant portraits that adorned the walls. The advisers, now prisoners of their own scheme, watched helplessly as the empire they had sworn to protect teetered on the brink of collapse. And so, the greatest deception became their reality. They had traded truth for power only to find themselves ensnared by the lies they had woven. The once mighty empire stood as a hollow shell, its foundations eroded by corruption and deceit. As the people finally began to see through the illusion, the fall of the emperor became inevitable, dragging his handlers down with him into the abyss of their own making. In the end, the truth was laid bare for all to see, not through the innocent eyes of a child but through the collective awakening of a betrayed and broken populace. The emperor's new reality was not one of grandeur and majesty, but of a tragic farce, a cautionary tale of the perils of unchecked ambition and the fragile nature of power built on deception. The End Thank you for your time today. Until next time, stay gruntled.